I'm Lauren DeSantis and this is Capital Cooking in Sweden. Capital Cooking is traveling to the west coast of Sweden to explore food, culture, and nightlife, this unique destination. Along the way, we'll catch our own crayfish, learn some new cocktail recipes, cook a family-style meal in a Swedish home, and taste the best oysters in the world. In this episode of Capital Cooking, it's all about the foods and flavors unique to the west coast of Sweden. We'll catch and eat some fresh crayfish, then cook with a chef at the beautiful seaside hotel. After that, we'll head back out on the water to taste the prized Swedish oysters. Finally, we'll wrap it all up with an awesome cocktail. I first had a taste of crayfish in Stockholm last year, and ever since then, I've been craving it. The West Coast is the best place to go if you want to get it fresh. We just arrived in Fjallbaka, and we're going to hop on a boat to go on a crayfish safari. We headed out onto the cold water to catch some lunch with a local fisherman in Fjallbaka. He takes groups out on safaris like this for an unforgettable experience. Once we were out into the prime crayfish area, he started pulling out the traps he set on the bottom of the sea to lure the crayfish in. These traps he set yesterday yield a couple of crayfish each. It's not a huge catch, but more than enough for a meal. The number of crayfish he catches per day varies with the climate and the weather. This method of catching crayfish is more sustainable than the commercial trawling, which dredges up the swaths of seabed. With our basket full of crayfish and the cages checked, he threw them back into the sea to try his luck again tomorrow. So now we're going ashore. Okay. Yes. And so you can have a taste of it. Yeah. Yes. So I'm gonna put this on. We docked at the fisherman's private island with a small boathouse. He had a steamer and a picnic table set up for lunch. He grabbed the water straight from the ocean and poured it into the pot. Then he added a little bit of salt and just let it boil. Time to add the crayfish. Now we have to put them in the water. Are they going to cry? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Oh, no. Oh. No. Oh, no. Help me. Help. So we just put a little salt in uh, sea water? Sea water and extra salt, because you can't compare the taste of uh, water from from your house yeah. or the sea water, because in the sea water you've got a lot of minerals in it, mm. which you not have there. Yeah. And you add a little extra salt for flavor? Yes. And then you leave them go for about five or six minutes? Yes, when they start to boil again. And then we get to uh, enjoy. Yeah. And about six minutes later, they were ready to eat. Oh, wow, those look good. Yeah. Now we're just going to leave them here on the rock to air cool. Yes. Cool by the wind. Cool by the wind. So in a couple of minutes, it's time for it. Yay. For a fresh one. Ooh. Looks yummy. Yeah, it is. We brought the crayfish inside to share with some of our new Swedish friends. Hey guys, we got some uh, crayfish. Yeah. Who's hungry? Hey! hey. 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 <laughs> the crayfish looked like they were cooked perfectly. I couldn't wait to dig in. There we go. Let's just eat it. Mmm. Mm. Good meat. Really good, delicious. Yeah, so you don't need like, extra spices. Right. So this is uh, fresh out of the water. Can't get any more fresh than this. Even when you get them fresh off the boat in the storage, it's still going to be probably a day or two before they... Um, the time, yes. Yeah, so this is the best you could possibly get. It's delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everyone agreed these were the freshest crayfish we had ever eaten. The meat was tender, juicy, and almost sweet. It gives lobster a run for its money. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so good. Back on the dry land, we stayed at the Hotel Brigham Fjallbaka, which boasted of a great restaurant. Chef Jurgen uses the freshest seafood for his dishes with classic Swedish flavors. All right, we are here at... Brigham Fjallbaka. And we are with uh, Chef Jurgen. Yes. And Philip. And they are going to show us how to make a seared cod 
with a a brandad sauce. So we're gonna start here with making this stock that's gonna be like a crayfish sauce, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So what do we have to do to get we're started? We're going to put the, we chopped the uh, celery root, roots, celery roots, carrots, onions, parsnips, yeah. onions, onion, fennel. Fennel. It's all gonna make this really delicious broth. Yeah, exactly. And then we put in the crayfish. Crayfish? Yeah. We're taking off the good parts of it, so we're just okay. using the stuff the uh, people, yeah. We have the heads, the heads and, and the we claws have some and lobster all that. in there as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Put that in there too. Yeah, we put all the good parts. Nice. And then we put it on the stove and we're going to... Caramelize it? Caramelize it and burn it real hot. Okay, good. Yeah. Just saute the vegetables until they're light brown, then add water to cover. For a Swedish flavor, Jürgen added some fresh dill. Bring it to a boil, then simmer for 20 minutes before straining. So now we'll go so, get started on the cod? Yeah, exactly. In the cod we will put the, in the salt and water. So, so we're take, doing a brine. Yeah, so we put in the salt here. And we can take some lemon zest as well in it. We can all... Like a simple syrup, but with salt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think it's there. Now we didn't put uh, so much salt in there, but it's ten percent is good. And then you can let it be there for like fifteen minutes, and then you have a good taste of it, and you don't have to add any salt or mm. anything on it. So we just put the fishes, put the pieces in there, and we'll let it be there for like fifteen minutes. That's it. Yeah. And then we we'll drain it and fry it later. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So while the cod is sitting in the brine for fifteen minutes, we're gonna get started on the mash. Um, with some mashed potatoes, and Philip has some that he already uh, boiled. So we have five potatoes, you just boil them when you can like yeah, stick a yeah. fork through them. About and 20 minutes, yeah. and you can put some uh, garlic in it as well, boil it with it. Garlic with yeah. it, and then he's got a masher, and he's just gonna mash the potatoes up. They kind of look like our Yukon gold potatoes, they're like kind of a yellow color, that looks good. What else do you have to add to them? I'll add some cream and some milk. So that's like half and half? Yeah. And lots of butter. Lots, butter lots is of good. butter. Butter is Butter good. makes everything better. <laughs> that looks good. I can smell the butter. Yeah. It smells good. And then we have to put in the smoked uh, fish. You can use uh, whatever fish you want to. Usually you use uh, white fish like cod or something, but we're using uh, the mackerel now because this is very West Coast typical uh, fish dish. Yeah. yeah. This one is uh, hot smoked, I think, and then you can you can do it like in a small box and it takes like 10 minutes. Depends how smoky you want to have it. Mm -hmm. Really, really tasty. Mm, smells good. Yeah. Can you eat it like this? Yeah. Mm, that's nice. So sometimes you just eat it plain? Yeah, you can have a, like a cold sauce with a creme fraiche with some uh, herbs in it or whatever. Mm. Some just nice. boiled potatoes. Is it all ready? No, at the last step they just add some chives. Yeah. You can put some Salt. lemon in it with lemon zest. Nice. These are um, Swedish style mashed potatoes. Yeah. Actually, I think it's coming from France or something. But, really? Uh, well, we're eating it in yeah, Sweden. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> in the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. I don't taste it. Mm, yummy. Yeah. Good. Now we're done with that step, yeah. and what are we going to do next? Now we can take the water off from the cod, and then we can start fry it and uh, do the dish. Sounds on good. The plate. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so we've dried off the fish and we're gonna get ready to fry it and finish the dish. So, ready? Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I have a real hot pan here now. Put some butter. Butter in it. A lot of butter. A lot of butter. That's good. That smells good. And then we're going to fry it and start with the skin side. You get that really crispy. So how long are you gonna? Cover I will fry it here now. You can finish it in the oven. The the temperature of the fish is 
the best is when it's around 45 to 47 degrees in the in the middle of it. And, uh, Which is uh, what is that in Fahrenheit? Uh, it's probably. Uh, <laughs> I use a converter for that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can uh, use a spoon on it and put all the Take butter the on it. Oh yeah. Like nice. That and looks then you, good. And you will have a nice color of it, brown. Ooh. And then we have to put it up. This. Uh, we put it in the oven for about five to seven minutes. Okay. All right. And meanwhile, that's in the oven. We we're going to saute this stuff? Yeah, we're going to finish uh, the potato mash and the sauce. So then we, again, we take lots of butter. We like the butter here in Sweden. Good. This Swedish butter? Yep, it is. So we're going to use some fennel in it. Some white pepper. White peppercorns? Yeah. I'm going to do take some saffron, saffron powder. We make it brown like that. And we put it in the, to the stock. And then we put some uh, milk or cream. I like cream, so I use the cream. I like cream. It's good. It's better. Yeah. We put that in. Ooh, nice. And then we're going to do some... Uh, little veggies? Yeah, a little bit of ragu, or what you say. Yeah, yeah it's the same. Yeah. Rat-tat-tui. <laughs> we do a vegetable some, ragu. Yeah. Little carrots. carrots. Onions. Onions. Is that broad lima beans? beans? Broad beans. Broad beans. It's not as hard as a soya bean. The soya bean is a little bit harder, so this is just a little bit softer. And now I reckon we have had it in like five minutes. You can feel it. And a good thing to do it is to stick something in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it's soft, it's done. As long as it's here, you get the... Pull back up. Yeah, then it's uh, not done. It needs maybe one more minute or two. So okay. then we'll have around 45 to 47 degrees. So meanwhile, that is going to be done. We take this to the plate. Yay. <laughs> all right, so the fish is all ready. It's cooked for about five or six minutes. And now we're going to make the beautiful plate. Yep. So we'll starting to plate the, the mash, the brandad. It's the mash with the smoked fish in it. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, and we will take the herbs. Makes it look pretty. That's the color. Lots of color. Lots of color. Take the fish. Yeah, top. Nice. And we will take the sauce and we will mix it to get the nice foam. <laughs> Using the foam. Like that. I reckon the dish is done. Alright, this looks great. I can't wait to eat it. Look at how it just the fish just falls apart. Get some of the mash Flakes. and the good sauce. Mmm. It's delicious. Good. I love the I can taste the fennel in the sauce. Tastes really nice with the fish and the mash. It's a perfect plate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For an equally spectacular Swedish seafood experience, we headed north in search of the world's most famous wild oysters. Grebstad is the place to go for friendly, knowledgeable fishermen who regularly dive for the best oysters. I met up with a fisherman in his boathouse. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm really excited to go on this oyster safari today. Yeah. Welcome to the west coast of Sweden. Thanks. We are in Evertsjöbod, Grebbestad. 90% of the Swedish oyster is from this place here. Wow. It's only wild oysters. We don't have any farmers, only wild, naturally oyster banks. People say the oyster levels say this is the best. Oysters. The best of the best. The best of the best. I can't wait to try some. Yeah. Let's go. 
Okay. We started off on the pier, just dredging into the shallow water. In this region, you can catch world-class oysters without having to leave your back porch. Oh, wow. So how long do you like to let them grow? Do you want them about this size, or do you usually want them bigger, or uh, is this I, the typical size? This one is too small, I think. Too small? This so one you're... is uh, perfect. Yeah? Uh, seven, eight years old oysters. So you put the other ones back, and then you eat the The small ones? one I put back again. Yeah. I actually, I didn't really used to be a big fan, but I've been eating a lot of oysters lately, and hmm? starting to like them a lot more. I think this is the first time you eat Swedish oyster. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Next, we hopped onto a boat and took it out into the Nordic Sea to discover where the best oysters grow. Along the way, we picked up some crab pots, which turns out to be way harder than I thought. How long is it? <laughs> it's really heavy. <laughs> Oh wow, look at him. He's got all of his back legs around the cage so you can't get him off there. Look at him. No, I went back in. <laughs> Whoa, look at that one. Those are some big claws. How old do you, how old is this crab, you think? It can be 25 years old. So this one. He's an old 15, 20 years. He's an old man. Yes. You look delicious. Don't pinch me. <laughs> This part of the Nordic Sea has some of the best oysters in the world. The secret to the great taste lies in the temperature of the water. The cooler the climate forces them to grow slowly and develop a more complex flavor. In the deep water, divers go down to find the best of the best. Now Hannah is going to show me how to shuck yes. these premium oysters. Exactly. I'm going to give you some beer first. Okay, good. <laughs> This is a lovely Ambassador's Port beer. It's a thick, chocolatey flavor, and it goes really well with these oysters especially. It's a Swedish beer from a small brewery close to here. Ooh. So here's the oyster. You have uh, one flat side of the oyster and one round side. So you put the round side in your hand, and you take the knife in here, you can see where the oyster starts to grow. It's like, uh, here's the hinge. Mm -hmm. They grow really slowly because of uh, the cold water. And uh, that's why they have a, such a strong taste. Strong and that makes them minerals. some of the most premium oysters. Yes. So when you push with these fingers, that's the important thing. Never use this hand because it's easy to cut yourself. You're already done. <laughs> You've been practicing. <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> there you go. And what? cut it loose. Cut it loose in the bottom. Yeah. So, and then it's ready to eat. With a little bit of lemon if you like. And down the hatch. <laughs> Mm. Good. There's a lot of minerality in the flavor. Good salty brininess. And um, the lemon cuts it a little bit. So if you like it super salty, don't do lemon. But if you um, like a little bit of that acidity, add a little lemon and delicious. Fresh Good. out of the water. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <Okay>. Cheers. <laughs> There is no denying the great taste of fresh seafood here on the west coast of Sweden. Time for a change of pace though. I headed to a cocktail lounge in downtown Malmo to see if their drinks measured up to their food. We're here at the Rosen Bar in Malmo, Sweden, and Christian is going to show us some of the famous cocktails here. He's going to start with uh, a Mexican standoff. I'm making it with, uh, I'm actually make our homemade grenadine. Oh, wow. And um, I'm going to strain it to also a homemade Chambord foam that we make. I'm going to top it off with flames <laughs> and green chutroots. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. We're going to start with a, a 
viejo tequila. También se de plata. Nice aged tequila. That's the shard. Shard. Chambord foam. Chambord foam. Chambord is a uh, raspberry. Raspberry and dark berries liqueur. You can see the layers. Flame with green shirt shoes. Woo! <laughs> it's a very nice aromatic uh, touch to it without leaving too much flavor. Ooh! Can't wait to try. Very nice. It's um, the citrus from the lime juice, and then the sweetness from the homemade grenadine, and that little bit of berry flavor on top. And then right before you take a sip, you can smell the um, the chartreuse, the kind of like anise type of smell. So it's really nice because uh, you have all your senses. So, cheers. The west coast of Sweden is definitely living up to its reputation for world-class seafood. From the crayfish to the best oysters in the world, everything has been absolutely incredible. Combined with the Swedish sensibility for keeping things simple and letting the fresh ingredients shine, this should totally be moved up on your list of destinations to visit armed with a large appetite. And the drinks don't disappoint either. Be sure to check out CapitalCookingShow.com for all of these recipes. And join us next week when I take the cooking away from the seaside and instead prepare a family-style meal in a home kitchen with locally sourced ingredients. Don't miss it.